This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the functions of the Datalink control console. Our first step is to engage Master Arm, set our Abris to navigation mode, and enable our laser. Next, taking a look at the aircraft's right wing, we can see that we have a wingman in our formation. We'll be using him with the Datalink control panel to mark targets and receive targets. First I'll demonstrate how to create a data link target by uncaging the Schwal and locking onto a target. For now I'll ignore this set of T-55s because I'm going to have my wingman mark that up for me. Now we're going to take a look at these UAZs and I'll mark one of these up. Now that we have our target marked up, I'll go over the functions in each key of the data link. In the first row of the data link console, we have target types, as well as ingress point. The second row has our wingman from 1 to 4, as well as a button to send to all. Then we have erase, ingress, and send to memory. With the target lock, selecting target type and send to memory will create a data link target, as seen on the Abris map. Your wingman can also mark targets for you. Select the wingman, then select recon, select the range, and they'll head in the direction you're facing and mark targets for you. Your wingman will mark all targets and target types within a range of them. Once a wingman detects a target and marks it, the target type as well as the wingman who marked it will appear on the datalink console, as well as the Abris map system. To store the datalink target, select send to memory, and you can also erase the datalink target by selecting clear. For the next example, I'll demonstrate how a wingman can be used to attack a designated datalink target, but first we'll have to reset our targeting system, and this can be done by pressing backspace or the reset targeting button in the targeting system console. Next we select the target type in our data link top row, and we'll see the target start to flash, that indicates which target is selected, pressing again we'll select the next target. From there select the wingman you want to relay the data to, in this case I'm relaying it to everybody, and then send. Next we go back into our radio menu, select the wingman, select engage, select data link target, and then the type of data link target. In this case, I'm just going to have them attack the single target. For the next example, I'll go over how the data link can be used to slew the Schwal over its target automatically. Select the target type, then select Ingress. Then uncage your Schwal. It'll automatically center itself over the selected target. By pressing Automatic Turn to Target, the hotkey is Q for this on the keyboard, the aircraft can be automatically pointed towards the target. The Automatic Turn to Target key can be found in the upper left button of the targeting console. I'll demonstrate this again, but I'll exaggerate it by changing my heading off about 45 degrees to my right. First I'll disable autopilot heading hold, yaw over to the right, and then re-engage. Now reselecting the target type, selecting ingress, and then uncaging the schmall, will automatically center it over the target again. 
and then selecting automatic turn to target on the targeting control console will automatically adjust the aircraft's heading to point at the target location. Selecting my hard points with my ATGMs, we can see that the Vicar missile reticle is centered over the target, but since we're out of range, we do not have launch authorization. For the final function of the Datalink console, I'll be going over ingress points. Lock up a location, and then select Ingress on the top right. Send to memory, and it'll create an ingress location. I'll create two more, and then we'll demonstrate how these can be used. Ingress points created with the data link are displayed as a pentagon on the Abrams map system with the number in the center representing which ingress point. With the route mode autopilot enabled, we can select an ingress point, select data link ingress, and it will steer the aircraft towards the selected ingress point. Select data link ingress again to cancel, re-enabling control over the last selected waypoint. In the lower section of the HUD we have a range to the selected ingress point. And finally we can use our navigation control console to give us information in regards to true heading time and distance. This can be done with either of the lower right keys. The lower right one will display to a target and the one just to the left of it which is selected here will display to a waypoint. And with that you now know how to use the Datalink control console.